What's going on everybody? The Networking Guru here and in today's video, we're going to go over how to automate STIG checklist creation on Cisco iOS XE devices. Whew, that's a whole word salad, but today is going to be a quick demonstration. Well, not necessarily quick, but a demonstration of how, let's say you're a network security engineer, cybersecurity engineer, and it's your job to create what's called a STIG chest checklist for your devices. So this is a video that's going to be geared more towards, well, it is geared towards engineers that work in the DOD. And let's say it's part of your responsibilities to create a checklist and upload that to your ISSO, your ISSC, to the cyber team to say, hey, all these STIGs that we have to be compliant with, here's a checklist for you. Now we do this using what's called the DISA STIG viewer and the DISA STIG benchmarks to create that checklist. Now, typically, this is a manual process on Cisco iOS XE devices where we actually upload, we'll create a new checklist in STIG Viewer. We go down and look at all the benchmarks we have to hit, log into our network device, check to see if we have dynamic trunking protocol disabled. If we do, then we say not a finding. But if we do have it enabled, we say it's open. And then it's up to us to go and fix that. So this is a part of pretty much cybersecurity compliance in the DOD, complying with DISA STIGs, and sometimes you're tasked with making those checklists to tell cyber what's a finding, what's not a finding, or what's open. So we're going to take that manual process, we're going to automate it, and I'm going to show you how. First step is I'm going to go through the manual process with you. So exactly what am I talking about? Because you may come across this video and you're like, this doesn't apply to me, and I work the private sector, we don't have to do this. Or maybe you are in a position where you're doing STIGs for your organization and you're doing it the hard way in the manual process, then this video is for you. Now, this is for networks, though. This is for Cisco iOS XE devices. So first, manual way. Then we're going to show you how to do it the automated way. So let me get my face out of the screen a little bit here. And up here, I have a checklist of everything we need to automate the creation of a STIG checklist checklist for Cisco iOS XE devices. Now, before we get into this, again, I'm going to go through how to do it the manual way. So let's kind of, again, take a step back and go over what we're talking about. So within the government, DOD, uh, DISA, if you touch a DISA network, you have to be compliant with the DISA Security Technical Implementation Guides, STIGs. Every single device that could be on a DOD network, or excuse me, a DISA network, we have these STIG benchmarks that are at the DOD Cyber Exchange public website here. Okay, Now, this is public. You don't need a CAC or anything to access this. So you can see here we have all these different STIG topics. So I went and looked up Cisco. So if we have any of these Cisco devices on our network, this is going to be the STIG benchmarks that we have to comply with. So these STIG benchmarks are going to show us pretty much everything we had to do to harden that device for it to be compliant. Now, you may be saying, okay, now let's get down to the nitty-gritty. How do I actually view or look at these benchmarks? So let's say I have a Cisco IOS XE switch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to download this benchmark. And you can see here, it's a zip folder. I've downloaded this a couple times. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So in this folder uh, i wish i could zoom in i'm like team viewed into a windows machine so i'll hopefully just, you know maybe zoom in on youtube but you can see here these are all the stigs we have to be compliant with so if i have a layer two switch i have to be compliant with this stig benchmark and this stig benchmark here now how do we view this how do we actually view these stigs well you need something called stig viewer so I have already downloaded Stig Viewer, but again, this is something that you can download for free at the DISA website here, or really this cyber.mil website. So it's for Windows. You can apparently download on Linux. I haven't tried, but it's a Windows application. That's the easiest way. I'm, on, I'm recording on a MacBook. That's why I'm team viewered into a Windows machine, okay? There's my little team viewer session here. So once you install Stig Viewer, and again, if you're on like a enterprise network, you're going to need admin rights for a lot of this, okay? So you need admin rights. You may need to talk to your system engineers or system admins to get the rights to install Stig Viewer. But once you install it, 
what you're going to do is we're going to open it up and let's go through and see our benchmarks that we have to be compliant with or our stick checklist. So we're going to hit new here and we're going to say, okay, we can use the stick explorer and we're going to add stick to the library or hit open stick. We can also just go straight to the website and pull it down. Okay. But I'm going to hit open stick here and I'm going to click this Cisco iOS XE switch and it has to be in that, um, zip folder so now let's say this is just a layer two switch so we're not doing it's not our router it's not like a core switch so we only have two stigs we have to be in compliant with if this ios e, ios xe switch was also acting as like our distro or core layer switch doing the routing we'd have three different stigs we got to be compliant with so this layer two switch and this network device management stig so i'm going to click on this and this is going to show me like if i click here the actual stig, right? What I had to do to be in compliance. But typically, what you're going to want to do is create a checklist. And then this is what you're going to get to your cyber team. If they say, hey, is that device stig compliant? We got to do quarterly stig compliance or updates. Is it compliant? You know, because maybe this added something to this list, so we got to make another checklist. So you have to go through here, and we can just read this and say, I think this is like the getting rid of dynamic trunking protocol. Verify they do not belong to the native VLAN. Okay, native VLAN. So now, what I would do as someone creating this stick checklist is I'd have to log into that switch and check to make sure every access port is not part of the native VLAN. It's not part of the default VLAN. And then once I verified that, I'd have to put not a finding. But let's say for some reason our architecture needs the native vlan to be used at default one i'd have to leave a comment here or put a finding details here okay and then also for this checklist i gotta put the device host name so i could put this is my office switch and i'd have to put the ip address like it's you know management ip address so you can see this is a big manual process so now how do we automate this because imagine you're doing this for 100 switches. So yes, obviously you may say, hey, those 100 switches have a, the same baseline configuration. We put the same baseline on them. They're all the same. Which if you're in that network, good for you. But typically not every access switch is going to be the exact same. Obviously some of the security hardening, we can make the same on it. But maybe you're in a very strict environment. They say, no, you got to check every single switch. That takes a long time. Especially if you're in a big enterprise doing this manually so now i'm going to show you how to generate these checklists and again remember this is just one stick this is just the l2 the layer 2 one we also have this ndm one and this router one if our switch is doing if it's a layer 3 switch if it's doing our routing for us okay so now how do we do this the automated way so what i'm going to do here is get exit off that Yes, I want to quit. And I'm going to come here to our checklist. So there's a couple things that are essential for us to automate the creation of that STIG checklist. So first, it's going to be download the STIG viewer. So we had the STIG viewer. And then it's going to be this tool right here, this evaluate STIG tool. So this is an open public tool created by the Navy that if you have cat card access, you can download and run on your nipper and sipper environments so what does it take to run this well it's just a powershell script so it's not something that needs to compile and it's not a dot exe that you're going to have to allow on your whitelist or allow to be installed on your devices or your network it's just a powershell script but because of that you're going to need administrative privileges for it okay so you're going to need administrative privileges for powershell when you're running this now this automated tool doesn't actually reach out to the cisco devices what you're going to have to do is a little bit of a manual process. You're going to have to open up PuTTY or Secure CRT, log into the switch or router. This is good for a router too. So this steps I'm showing you works on an iOS XE router. You're going to have to log into that device and do a command called show tech support and grab the entire show tech support output and save it as a text file. And then we're going to launch this STIG tool 
and then import that file and then execute the PowerShell script. And then it's going to automatically create those checklists for us that you just saw me doing manually. So this is pretty awesome. Now, a couple questions you may have. Do I have to do this one at a time? So you can write like a Python or Ansible script that I may show in a future video to reach out to all the devices on your network, do that show tech support command, and then create TXT files and put them in your local share drive or to a SharePoint portal or to wherever, right? So that's something we can do. We can take a folder and run an entire directory through that stick tool and it'll parse through each individual show tech support text file for all your hundreds of switches for you. So we can do like 50 switches at a single time to create their checklist, okay? So let's go ahead and do it. So I've already downloaded Stig Viewer. I have Secure CRT. That's what I'm going to be using. And I have a Catalyst 9300 switch I'm going to be doing for this show, Tech Support, which is an iOS XC device. And then I also have Administrator Privileges on PowerShell. Now, when we get into PowerShell, we're going to have to set our execution policy. Execution policy to remote signed. I believe that's the command. And we're also going to have to import certificates from the evaluate stick tool. Okay. So let's go ahead and do it. So here is the link where I downloaded the actual stick tool. I had to use my cat card to log in. I've already downloaded this. Okay. So I believe I have this stick tool. Let's see here. I have it in my public folder, I believe. Yes. So I put it in my public folder. Doesn't matter where you put it. You just need to have admin access on this computer. So now here's the steps, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this path. Copy. And then I'm going to open PowerShell as an administrator. Yes, my PowerShell is not blue. So if you're used to that, I'm sorry. Now, before we actually run the Evaluate Stig tool, we have to go get the show tech support file. So what I'm going to do is come here to Secure CRT. And if you're wondering, we can just... Part of this uh, process is also getting into that directory that we just copied. So we'll do change directory. Okay, let me see here. There we go. So we have to go to that directory. Now, before we can run our actual stick tool to automate the process of creating that checklist, I have to go into my network device and get that show tech support output. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to come here to, I'm on Secure CRT too, and I believe Putty can do the same thing. I'm going to hit Receive ASCII, and I'm going to put that in my Documents folder, and I'm going to call this Show Tech Support iOS XE Switch, and save it as a text file, okay? And now everything that's going to come across this terminal emulation program, all the output, is going to get saved to that file. So now I'm going to hit show tech support and all that. If we come here to our documents, you can see here, let's refresh. Where's the refresh on this? Okay. I don't know how to refresh apparently on this, but if we come here back to documents, it should be saving all that output to this file. Okay. So I'm going to pause the video while it goes through this. Oh, it's already done. That was way easier than I thought. Okay. Now we're going to have to come here to secure CRT and end receiving it because then it's not going to let us like use that file if it's still trying to receive something, right? So you can see we can open that with Visual Studio Code. Just open that thing. And there's the entire file that we're going to feed to our STIG tool, Okay. Alrighty, now back to PowerShell. So before we can run the STIG tool, we're going to have to do a couple things. One, we're going to have to set the execution policy 
to remote signed. And we're going to hit capital A, yes to all. This just allows us to run scripts. Then we're going to come back to our stick tool, which I put here in the public folder, public desktop, evaluate stig. There's a folder here called prerequisites. We're going to have to import those certificates. Okay? It's going to open up a command prompt and import certificates for us to use the stig tool. Now, we're going to run the actual tool now. It's going to be manage, evaluate stig tool. Now, I don't know why it's cutting off on my screen here, but you can see it says select Cisco file. This says select Cisco file. It's cutting off on my screen. I think it's because I'm team viewed into a Windows computer, but oh, that's just that just says select Cisco file, okay? If I go to the actual computer, you it would be able to actually see it. I'm team viewed in. I don't know. Maybe it looks weird. So a couple things we're going to do here. I'm going to set the timeout to five, something that's not needed, just something I like to do. And I'm going to do this CKLB. So remember that manual process we did in the beginning? I'm now going to create all those STIG checklists at once. So I'm going to put CKLB. I'm going to select the Cisco file. You can see here in documents, I have the show tech support. I don't know where my other file went, but that's okay. This one I did yesterday, It'll it's the same thing. And then we're going to execute. Now, if we come back to PowerShell here, it's telling us, please wait. But it's going to start creating that checklist. It might have just gone too quick for you to actually see it. But this is also going to save this checklist to the public folder under documents as well. So once this script runs, we're going to go back to the public uh, folder users public desktop and then we're going to be able to actually see in stig viewer our automated checklist okay so you can see here running cisco config scan and it's it's nice because what it's going to do it's going to take the host name the ip address on there and it's actually going to input that into that checklist remember manually we had to do that ourselves so that's going to do it for us so we come back here you see it says results saved to users, public, documents, STIG compliance. So now I'm going to come back to STIG viewer and I'm going to open a checklist. So instead of me making one, which was that long manual process, come here to desktop, evaluate STIG or no, where did it say? Documents, stick compliance, office switch, checklist. And look, it has the layer two and the NDM checklist there for me. So I can load that. And now look it. It's going to automate a lot of this process for us. We want to make a new one. We can load a checklist. And there's our NDM stick compliance for us. And yes, my, <laughs> my switch is not compliant at all. So this went through and found all those open vulnerabilities for us. Some of these it found not applicable and some it said just not received, which pretty much just means like it couldn't figure out, right? Whether or not it had it or didn't have it. Um, and most of the time if it's like this, it might just be not applicable, right? But anyways, that's for you and your network to decide. And all right, that's how we automate that process. If you have any questions, please comment below. All the links will be in the description as well. And do not forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for viewing.